Hey everyone, it's Nancy and today we're going to be shaping a loaf with string and trying to make some Christmas trees on the side. We'll see if this works out. It is a concept that is in my head. Uh, we'll see if it works in practicality. This loaf is about 500 grams of flour, 20% of which is whole wheat, so about 100 grams whole wheat, 70% hydration, and 2.5% salt, so it is my standard. Everything I am using in this video I will have linked down below in the description box with affiliate links to include my Bread Basics Bread Sling. Can you see? Oh, here, there we go. Bread Basics Bread Sling. I like this one. If you've seen before, you've seen me talk about it because it has a little bracelet that goes around it in my cabinet. Keeps it from flopping around in these nice long handles so I can lift them out of my deep Dutch oven very, very easily. The dog is hanging out with me, so you may hear him do a few things. So for these shaped loaves with string, and we'll also be using the kitchen shears, I believe, quite a bit in this loaf, which makes the scoring easier. Um, I have got some just standard string, um, just twine kind of, that is soaking in some canola oil. Whatever kind of oil you have will work just fine. That's so that it won't stick uh, along the bottom. Now I've seen people who have done loaves and shaped them with string and they do not soak it in oil. So probably works that way too. It's just that I'm not willing to find out that it doesn't and waste a loaf of bread that I have been waiting 24 hours or more to bake. So just squeezing any excess out there. We're going to do a total of six sections, which will use three strings. Last one. I can see it dripping down the sides. Don't want it too oily. Then it makes an oily spot on top of the bread where it's tied. There'll be a little bit of oil, but it should not make that big a deal. Alrighty, I'm gonna take a paper towel. I'm gonna dry my hands so that they're not oily. I'm gonna take my bread sling. I'm just gonna set it on top like this. And then I'm going to take my turntable. This is a cheap Wilton turntable. I got it at Joann Fabrics, but like I said, I do have one linked for Amazon down below. I'm going to turn this over. And now we're going to lift that off. And I'm going to give this a light tie. So when I do my pumpkin loaves, I tend to tie this a little bit tighter because I really want those sides to bubble up in between where the tie is. But here I am going to go a light light tie. It's not even really going to make much of a bump, but when it rises in the oven, that's when we should get the, uh, the nice lines, but they won't be super deep. That one went a little bit tighter. It's never going to be perfect. Uh, perfectionist me had to accept that about sourdough. Let me get these off before the oil spreads too much down to my dough there because I'm seeing little drips of oil. Now I'm hoping that these are pretty much tied in the center. I think they may be off just a little. So we could wind up with a Christmas tree farm that has some trees that are taller than the others in the end. All right, it's our first use for our scissors there. So this is just a plain water bottle, just doing a squirt, a little rub to make sure it's all over. This will help my rice flour to adhere because I want my design to stand out. You don't have to do rice flour. It just makes it stand out a little more and I think it's really pretty. Plus if I sell the loaf or if it's one I use for a centerpiece, it just makes it all the much nicer and, and it doesn't take very long to do this. So I think given the amount of time it takes to make a loaf of sourdough, it's a worthwhile couple minutes I spend doing this. Now I'm just gonna sprinkle this rice flour all over. You could um, do the rice flour first and then tie the ties too. I think I've done that in the past also. My problem with that is it can get just a little most bit of oil on the rice flour spot and then you can't get it to stick anymore. So I like to put the, usually I like to put the ties down first. I've done it both ways. But keep in mind, with sourdough, you're gonna eat it so Nothing's going to stick around for long-term evidence unless you want to show pictures forever. 
All right, now we're going to start doing our marking for scoring. Um, initially, I thought I would make each one of these a tree, but I think what I might do is just go ahead and make the trees like this. And the reason why I'm going to give a little space between that, the line, the, the outside of the tree, and the tie, the string, is because if I try to make my trees right next to it, I'm going to stand a good chance of cutting my string. And I do not want to do that. That would ruin the entire concept. And I could just get my lawn and start cutting. But again, I'm trying to, you know, have my greatest chances of success possible. And if I have a line to follow, that helps me. I still sometimes go rogue and don't follow the line, though. Now I'm going to take my kitchen shears and I'm actually going to do my little bit of snipping inside of these triangles that I created. And this is to create an appearance of leaves and branches. Let me get all the way down to the bottom. I'm just going to do this on all six. of these little trees. You know what's neat about this? You don't have to do it perfectly because pine trees don't grow perfectly. You just want to randomly get in there and start snipping. Okay, get you a little bit deeper. Now, I'm going to take my lawn, and I use the type of razor that I've started doing this now that only has one side that's sharp, the other side is covered. Safety razor, is that what that's called? Anyway, uh, because I, I have a habit of trying to put my finger there, and I've cut myself before. So, we're going to do the outline of our trees, just go straight down. And these are our main scores. I'll go back in a minute and I'll cut these even sharper. Being real careful not to cut my little snips. That one could go farther from the, down to the bottom. I'm staying away from the snips that I made with the scissors. So now, because this is a main score, I'll just go back and make a nice deep cut. Along each of these. Now, I'm going to take my kitchen shears again. I'm going to go down on the outside. And down the other side. So that's cut all the way through. Last one. Ooh, there we go. 
And now last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm actually going to snip and lift a little bit each one of the tops of the trees. So really none of this is difficult, it's just a little bit time consuming. Did I already get this one? I think I did. Get that a little deeper there. Because usually I don't want things to really raise up, but in this case I do. There we go. So now I'm going to take this all over to the sink. I'm going to brush, use this brush, I'm going to brush all of that extra flour off into the sink so it doesn't get all brown and difficult to remove in the bottom of my Dutch oven. I'm going to bake this for 40 minutes with the lid on. It's going to put it into a 500 degree oven. The Dutch oven has been heating for 500 to 500 degrees. Once I get it in the oven, I'm going to reduce the heat down to 425, bake it for 40 minutes, and I will be back and we will take a look at the Dutch oven reveal together. Let's see how our Christmas tree loaf turned out. Did my idea work? It worked! Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. Okay, I can get the camera to come down to the side just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna take this out. And I'm gonna move it over here. And I'm gonna leave it right on the spread sling when I pop it in the oven, but we're gonna let it bake just a little bit longer at 425 along with its little friend here and get them as brown as I like. We'll be back to show taking off the string and the final, get a final look at it. Are you ready to take off the string on our Christmas tree loaf, a little stand of six Christmas trees? I'm excited. Now this is not all the way cool. It is, I just cut that at the top, the loosest one on top. This isn't all the way cool. It's just warm enough I can handle it. I'm not gonna pull any further because I think those other ones cross underneath it. So now we're gonna cut from the top here. I'm gonna find, there we go. And let me see if I can find the other one easily here. Being very careful. I see it. All right, there it is. All right, now let's take these off. This is so satisfying. I love doing this. See, this is the funnest part for me about these. Now, I didn't tie it real tight on this, so the crumbs should be better than this and in, in the crumb structure in a lot of these loaves that are tied with string because it wasn't smashed down so much. It just has a little bit of an indentation uh, compared to my pumpkin loaves that usually will be more divided, have a, a bigger indentation where the string was. So I'm pulling that down and we'll come to the other side. I'm going to have a little bit of resistance right there. And the last one. Let's turn it over and see what the finished product looks like. So there's a little bit of a line there where the string was and a nice divide. And then we have six almost perfect. I think that's my favorite little trees going on. I'm so glad that my idea worked. I'm excited about this. Well, if you know someone who is looking for a new and unique, not too difficult score for Christmas on their sourdough bread, please share this video for me. That uh, helps so much. But you know what really helps is squashing that like button. Um, that helps it, of course, move up in the algorithm, and comments help, but they're also really good for my state of mind. If you'd like to see the scoring of this little guy behind it, check the video before this one. And we will see you on my next scoring video. Thanks a bunch, and happy holidays. Bye-bye, and be blessed.